Karnataka new chief minister B.S. Yadirappa wins confidence motion in the assembly assures the house that his government will not indulge in vindictive politics appropriation bill also passed Karnataka assembly speaker K.R. Ramesh Kumar uh, tenders his resignation the three disqualified MLAs two from the congress and one independent Move, re, move Supreme Court challenging the Speaker's decision to disqualify him for the term of the present Assembly. On the International Tiger Day, India records a 33% increase in Tiger numbers in a span of four years. Between 2014 and 2018, Prime Minister Narendra Modi releases the results of All India Tiger Estimation 2018. Results show that there are 2,967 tigers in India compared to the 2,226 in 2014 estimation. Prime Minister says with around 3,000 tigers, India is one of the largest and safest places for tigers. India de uh, decides to extend a credit line of 100 million US dollars to Benin. Also decides to issue e-visa to Benin. President Ramnath Kovind and Benin President Patrice Talon signed four MOUs. President is in Benin in the first phase of, his, of the trip to three countries in Western African region. Rajya Sabha passes the banning of unregulated deposit scheme bill 2019. Discussion underway on insolvency and bankruptcy code amendment bill. The dam safety bill and National Medical Commission bill in the Lok Sabha for consideration and passing. In sports, Olympic champion Dalila Mohammed sets the world record in the women's 400 meters hurdles, runs a blistering 52.20 seconds race in the United States National Championships. Hello and welcome to the newscast. I'm Amit Pal Singh. Our top story on the International Tiger Day, Prime Minister Narendra Modi released the results of the fourth cycle of All India Tiger Estimation. The All India Tiger Estimation Report 2018 says India with around 3,000 tigers is one of the safest habitats for them in the world. Three-fourths of the world's tigers can be found in India. Prime Minister lauded the collective efforts of all stakeholders that has resulted in this tremendous increase in tiger population sabhi logon se yahi kahunga ki jo kahani ek tha tiger ke sath shuru hokar tiger jinda hai tak tak pahunchi hai wo wahi na ruke keval tiger jinda hai isse kaam nahi chalega Prime Minister Narendra Modi hailing India's Sankalp Sisiddhi mantra that has led to a 33% increase in tiger population in India since 2014. He released the All India Tiger Estimation Report 2018. The report states that three-fourths of the world's tigers can be found in India. Prime Minister lauded the collective efforts of all stakeholders that has resulted in this tremendous increase in tiger population. Nine long years ago, it was decided in St. Petersburg that the target of doubling the tiger population would be 2022. We in India completed this target four years early. This is one of the finest examples of Sankalpase Siddhi. PM Modi expressed confidence that India will prosper both economically and environmentally. This balance is what will contribute to a strong and inclusive India. Over the last five years, forest cover across the country has increased as rapidly as has the expansion of next generation infrastructure. Protected areas have increased since 2014 from 692 to more than 860 in 2019. The number of community reserves has gone up from 43 in 2014 to over 100 today. India has emerged as a leader in the sphere of climate action. The country has achieved several global emission reduction and clean fuel goals much before the set deadlines. India has already achieved the Sustainable Development Goal for cutting emission intensity of GDP goals by 20 to 25 percent and is a leader amongst nations striving to transition to clean fuel and renewable fuel-based economies. 
पीएम मोदी कॉल्ड फॉर अ बैलेंस्ड स्मार्ट एंड सेंसिटिव अप्रोच टू कंजर्वेशन हमें सह अस्तित्व को भी स्वीकारना होगा और सह यात्रा के महत्व को भी समझना होगा वी हैव टू बी बोथ स्मार्ट एंड सेंसिटिव एंड क्रिएट ए हेल्थी बैलेंस ऑफ एनवायरमेंटल सस्टेनेबिलिटी एंड economic growth forest and environment minister prakash javadekar attributed the success of project tiger to the nature being a part of our cultural heritage char saal pehle maine jab aankda likha tha board par 222226 tab logon ko bahut acha laga tha ki bharat aage badh raha hai karan hai ki हमारे जीवन शैली का हिस्सा है हमारे संस्कृति का धरोहर की हिस्सा है कि हम प्राणियों को भी चराचर सृष्टि का हिस्सा मानते उनको सगे सोयरे मानते हैं तो इसमें एक बहुत महत्वपूर्ण भाव है हमारे जीवन का सारी वनस्पति और सारे प्राणी सृष्टि भी हमारे जीवन का एक हिस्सा है PM also presented an award to Satyamangalam Tiger Reserve for showing the highest increment in the quadrennial management effective evaluation. Population of tigers can be maintained in future also and for the decades to come and centuries to come. And tiger will remain as an elegant animal which is an indicator of healthy forest ecosystem India is emerging as not just the fastest growing economy but also a conservation hub clearly illustrating that it is possible to strike a healthy balance between the two bureau report dd news showcasing to, uh, to the world india's uh, rich environmental heritage as well as taking india's thrift with uh, wildlife conservation and his uh, as his own experiences on the global stage prime minister modi will feature in discovery channels man versus wild program here's a sneak peek an ace adventurer who redefines the rules of survival unites with the leader of the world's largest democracy welcome to india watch this dynamic duo main aapke liye isko mere paas rakhunga on an epic adventure of a lifetime you are the most important man in india my job is to keep you alive man vs wild watch bear grills and prime minister modi premieres 12th august monday night at 9 And uh, President Ramnath Kovind is in uh, Benin on the first leg of his three-nation tour to the West African uh, region. India has decided to extend a credit line of hundred million dollars to Benin. Also, it's decided to issue e-visa to people of Benin. President Ramnath Kovind and Benin President Patrice Talon signed four MOUs. The seven-day visit is the first high-level tour of any head of state from India to the three West African countries: that's Benin, the Gambia, and uh, Guinea. President Kovind was accorded a ceremonial welcome by President Talon of Benin at the Presidential Palace of Cotonou. To boost our economic partnership, we signed an agreement wherein India will help set up an export credit agency in Benin. I also conveyed our decision to extend e-visa facility to Benin to give a boost to business and people to people ties. In addition to these initiatives, we offered a fresh line of credit of 100 million US dollars to finance development projects in Benin. We look took stock of the ongoing projects being financed by Indian assistance and hoped that they will be completed soon. especially the project to supply safe drinking water to 103 villages in benin defense minister rajnath singh is on a visit to mozambique he uh, visited the fadm military headquarters in maputo uh, india is willing to forge a strong bilateral relationship with mozambique by increasing regular engagement and cooperation in multiple spheres 
Defense Minister Rajnath Singh and Defense Minister of Mozambique witnessed the handing over ceremony of two fast interceptor boats to Maputo. Karnataka Chief Minister B.S. Yadirappa has won the trust vote he moved this morning in Karnataka Assembly. The trust motion was passed by a voice vote. Earlier while moving the trust motion, the Chief Minister promised he will not pursue vindictive politics and will set the state administration right. He reiterated that his government has decided to give two additional installments to farmers of the state besides what they are eligible for under the PM Kisan Yojana. He appealed to the opposition to work together with the government of the state and called for, un, uh, for unanimous support for the trust motion. Congress Legislative Party uh, leader Siddharamaya and JDS leader H.D. Kumaraswamy opposed the confidence motion. Siddharamaya claimed Yadirappa does not have the mandate of the people and claimed there is no guarantee that he will remain chief minister for long. The assembly passed the finance bill. The day also saw Karnataka Assembly Speaker K.R. Ramesh Kumar resigning from his post. Meanwhile, all three disqualified Karnataka MLAs today moved the Supreme Court. Congress rebels uh, Ramesh uh, Jara uh, Kiholi, uh, Mahesh Komathali and independent R. Shankar filed petitions challenging the Speaker's decision to disqualify them for the remaining term of the present Assembly. In Lok Sabha, Jal Shakti Minister G.S. Uh, Shekhawat introduced the Dam Safety Bill 2019. It seeks to provide a legal and institutional mechanism to ensure safe functioning of dams in the country and related issues. देश के कुल मिलाकर के जितने बांध बने हुए हैं 5,000 से ज़्यादा जिनका मैंने अभी चर्चा की है। उसमें से 92% डैम्स जो हैं वो इंटरस्टेट रिवर्स के ऊपर बने हुए हैं जो जो एक से दूसरे प्रदेश को जो है वो अफेक्ट करते हैं इसलिए मैं माननीय अध्यक्ष महोदय आपसे निवेदन करूंगा कि मुझे इस बिल को प्रस्तुत करने की अनुमति प्रदान की जाए Union Health Minister Dr. Harshwardhan tabled the National Medical Commission bill in the low house the bill seeks to uh, repeal the Indian Medical Council Act 1956 and provide for, uh, provide for reforms in the medical education system. The National Medical Commission bill that is going to be discussed in the parliament today, when history will be written in future, this will go down in history as one of the biggest reforms in the field of medical education and which is going to serve the people of India in a big way of the Narendra Modi government. In Rajya Sabha, the banning of the unregulated deposit schemes bill has been passed by a voice vote. Uh, Minister of State for Finance, Anurag Thakur, introduced the bill. The banning of unregulated deposit scheme bill 2019 has already been passed in the Lok Sabha. This bill is for the poor people, for the people who have been hurt and hurt and hurt and hurt जिनकी गाड़ी कमाई को खाने का साधन इन योजनाओं पॉन्जी स्कीम्स के माध्यम से बनाया जाता था और मुझे प्रसन्नता इस बात की है कि उस गरीब की गाड़ी कमाई को बचाने के लिए लोकसभा में भी आम सहमति से इस बिल को पास किया गया सभी अमेंडमेंट्स को विड्रॉ किया गया और राज्यसभा में भी एक ध्वनि के साथ जिस तरह से सबने बिल के पक्ष में बात कही है मुझे लगता है गरीबों के हित में एक बहुत बड़ी बात एक शुरुआत की Cutting across party lines, members in the Rajya Sabha have supported the bill that seeks to regulate unregulated deposit schemes in the country and protect the money of the poor depositors. Participating in the debate, Suresh Prabhu said it's a comprehensive bill which is a necessity for the economy as this will help mobilize savings in an unregulated environment. This particular legislation, which is very comprehensive, we deals with all those schemes which are really not coming into the regulated, as mentioned in the state. And therefore, it is actually a very welcome scheme and making sure that deposit mobilization is a necessity for economy. Nobody is against deposit mobilization. The question is how to make sure that deposit mobilization also happens 
at the same time nobody is taken for a ride. TMC member Derek O'Brien also supported the bill, saying this is this is the first time uh, the bill brought for the passage of the House after being scrutinized by a parliamentary panel. Stop a ghotala, chit fund ghotala, like the pearl chit fund ghotala. I'm glad with this bill these ghotalas will not happen again. And Union Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman to the table the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code Amendment Bill 2019 in Rajya Sabha. With the effective sp steps taken by the government, ease of doing business in India has improved. The World Bank ease of doing business for India improved post the bringing in of the insolvency and the bankruptcy code. The ranks improved for India, gave a lot of hope for industries that if they really do want to have the process of liquidation brought in, there is an amicable way of coming out of it and also without any uh, black mark on them we are coming here with an amendment bill, it is only to make sure that each of these amendments which are being brought in are brought in for greater clarity which is required so that no grey area prevails. Samajwadi MP Azam Khan today apologized to the Lok Sabha Speaker Om Birla for his unparliamentary remarks against a BJP member Rama Devi during the ongoing session of the House on the 25th of July. He described Rama Devi as his sister. The Speaker cautioned members to be careful in the choice of words, asking them to maintain decorum so that no such incident takes place in future. Under fire from various quarters, Samajwadi Party MP Azam Khan on Monday tendered apology in the Lok Sabha for his anti-women remarks in the House. As soon as the House assembled to begin the day's business after the weekend break, Speaker Om Birla called up Khan's name in view of strong demands made on Friday by members cutting across party lines for an apology. Members had also advocated strict action if necessary against Azam Khan. Making his point, Khan said he never had any ill feelings towards the chair when the remarks were made. I was not in the chair for the chair. I was in the chair for the chair. मेरे भाषण मेरे आचरण को पूरा सदन जानता है इसके बावजूद भी अगर चेयर को मेरे प्रति ऐसा लगता है कि मेरे से कोई भावना में गलती हुई है तो मैं उसकी क्षमा चाहता हूं As some of his words were not audible parliamentary affairs minister Prahlad Joshi said Khan should repeat the sentence clearly as the house could not comprehend what he actually said a visibly peeved Rama Devi said the member has a habit of uttering derogatory words against women इनकी आदत जो बिगड़ी हुई है वो जरूरत से ज्यादा बिगड़ी हुई है लेकिन हम ये चाहते हैं कम खान की जो आदत है ये सुधारनी चाहिए मैं एक बड़ी शांता हूं मैं संघर्ष करके लोगों की आवाज बनकर आई हूं ऐसा नहीं कि आदम खान जो मन करे वो बोल दे चेयर से इस तरह की बात सुनने के लिए मैं यहां पर नहीं आई हूं द स्पीकर देन आस्क खान टू टेंडर द अपॉलॉजी अगेन the speaker said members should be careful in uttering words and maintain decorum so that no such incident takes place in the future. कोई भी ऐसा शब्द जिससे हमारी संसद की मर्यादा मीडिया में अन्य माध्यम से छवि खराब हो ऐसा हमें कभी भी कोई कृत्य करने का प्रयास नहीं करना चाहिए हमारी कोशिश ये होनी चाहिए कि हम किस तरीके से हम सदन की इस Sabhapati Peed ki Adikshi Peed ki Pratishta ko bana sake. Khan's remarks against Devi during a discussion on the Triple Tarak bill on Thursday last were slammed by members as double meaning, malicious, utterly condemnable and a blot on all legislators. Parvan team, DD News. The Rajya Sabha today paid tributes to former Union Minister and Congress leader S. J. Pal Reddy who passed away yesterday. When the House met for the day, Chairman M. Venkaya Naidu read out an obituary re reference for the departed leader. Naidu got emotional while remembering the former Union Minister. He said in the passing away of Jaipal Reddy, the country has lost a veteran parliamentarian, an outstanding orator and an able administrator. Jaipal Reddy had represented uh, Andhra Pradesh in the upper house twice. His really remarkable, and he was here in both the houses, and also 
people, he was spokesperson of uh, his party at that time. And uh, it's really painful that uh, he left us. I was there in Hyderabad, went to his house yesterday to pay my last uh, respects. I'm sorry, I could not control my emotion because of 40 years of uh, personal association. Jaipal Reddy's last rites were performed today at uh, the Necklace Road in Hyderabad. The funeral procession began at 9 a.m. from his house. His remains were brought to the Gandhi Bhavan where the public paid respects. He was accorded a state funeral. Reddy, who represented the state of Andhra Pradesh in the upper house for two terms from April 1990 to 96 and from September 1997 to March 1998, was Union Minister holding different portfolios during 97-98 and 2004-2014. to Anusuya Uke has taken oath as the Governor of Chhattisgarh. She is succeeding Anandi Ben Patel, who is now appointed as Governor of Uttar Pradesh. Anusuya had been a member of the Rajya Sabha, the Upper House of Parliament from Madhya Pradesh. And Ramesh uh, Bhais, a seven-time MP from Chhattisgarh's Raipur and former Union Minister, has been sworn in as the Governor of Tripura. Chief Justice of Tripura High Court, Justice Sanjay Karol, uh, administered the oath of office to him. Bhais succeeds Kaptan Singh Solanki, who was accorded the Guard of Honor at the lawn of the old uh, Raj Bhavan building in Agartala. Speaking on the occasion, the Governor said that he would work for the all-round all development of the state. And Anandi Bain today took oath as Governor of Uttar Pradesh. Outgoing UP Governor Ram Naik attended the swearing-in ceremony of his successor. And Phagu Chauhan was sworn in as the 40th Governor of Bihar. The 71-year-old Chauhan succeeds Lalji Tandon, who is now the Governor of Madhya Pradesh. She was administered the oath by Patna High Court Chief Justice Amreshwar Pratap Sahi at a program held at the Raj Bhavan in presence of Chief Minister Nitish Kumar and Deputy Chief Minister Sushil Kumar Modi, besides several ministers. Chauhan, a six-time MLA from Gosi Assembly constituency in Uttar Pradesh Mao district, had resigned from the UP Assembly on Friday. ISRO in a tweet today informed that the third earthbound orbit raising maneuver for Chandrayaan-2 spacecraft has been performed successfully at 15-12 uh, hours uh, Indian Standard Time as planned using the onboard uh, pr propulsion system for a firing duration of 989 seconds. ISRO said that all spacecraft parameters are normal. The fourth orbit raising maneuver is scheduled on the 2nd of August. Six of the eight uh, indigenously built landing craft utility MK4 class ship LCU L56 has been commissioned into the Indian Navy by Vice Admiral Atul Kumar Jain, commander or the Eastern Commander of the Naval Command at uh, Vishakhapatnam today. LCU L56 is an amphibious ship with its primary role being transportation, deployment, and recovery of main battle tanks armored vehicles, troops and equipment from ship to shore and vice versa. Indigenously designed and built by Garden Reach Ship Builders and Engineers Limited, uh, Kolkata, the ship's commissioning portrays the growing capability of the Indian Navy in becoming self-reliant through indigenization. Speaking on the occasion, Vice Admiral Jain said that the new ship will be stationed at the Strategic Port Player Command. Yeah, today we have commissioned uh, Iron LCL uh, 56, uh, which is a uh, amphibious uh, war, uh, warship, and this ship is going to be based at Port Blair, that is our Andaman and Nicobar Command. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Andaman and Nicobar Command is a uh, geographically it is a, a very very strategic location where it is uh, located, and uh, it overlooks the busiest sea lines of communication and Malacca Strait. 
Ahead of the unprecedented snap polls on September 17th, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's uh, Likud party has put banners featuring his pictures with his Indian counterpart Narendra Modi, U.S. President Donald Trump and Russian President Vladimir Putin to uh, lure support by presenting him in a different league. Netanyahu's campaign has focused on bringing out his close chemistry with the world leaders and trying to uh, project him as a leader of unmatched stature in Israeli politics which is crucial for the country's security. Netanyahu, who created history on July 20th by becoming the longest-serving Israeli Prime Minister, surpassing Israel's first Premier David Ben-Gurion, uh, is facing a tough political challenge as opinion polls show flagging fortunes for his ruling Likud party. From an airport sit-in to violent clashes in suburban areas, to aimless marches through busy shopping districts, protests in Hong Kong do not seem to die down. Tens of thousands of demonstrators have taken over the streets near Sai Wan and Causeway Bay on Hong Kong Island. Hong Kong has seen eight consecutive weekends of anti-government and pro-democracy protests against a proposed bill that would allow people to be extradited from the city to stand trial in courts in mainland China. It is ranked as one of the safest cities in the world but recent protests have been followed by violent clashes between demonstrators, police and masked men wearing uh, welding sticks suspected of being criminal gang members. Meanwhile, the UAE has issued a travel warning for Hong Kong. It has advised visitors not to wear black or white. India strongly condemned the terrorist attack in Kabul in which a number of innocent Afghans were killed. It expressed its deepest condolences with the families of the deceased. A statement issued by the Ministry of External Affairs in New Delhi said the dastardly attack was also aimed at undermining the constitutional and democratic processes and institutions in Afghanistan. The statement said that India stands in solidarity with the government and the people of Afghanistan in their efforts to achieve enduring peace, security and stability. A powerful explosion had hit central Kabul yesterday, wounding Afghan President Ashraf Ghani's running mate Amrullah Saleh and killing at least two others. Saleh, a former Afghan spy chief turned politician, is an uh, a uncompromising opponent of the Taliban and other hardline Islamist groups. He led the country's National Directorate of Security unless until 2010. In Syria, at least 13 civilians, including five children, were killed in the Syrian government's airstrikes in Idlib province yesterday. The attacks came just a day after the UN human rights chief warned that those responsible for the latest wave of killings could be charged with war crimes. The Syrian government, backed by Russian forces, launched an offensive to capture Idlib in late April. Talks to try and save the Iranian nuclear deal were held at an emergency meeting in Vienna amid rising tensions between Iran and the West. Iran said that the meeting between Tehran and its partners yielded positive uh, developments but had not resolved everything. Speaking afterwards, Iran's senior nuclear negotiator Abbas uh, Arakchi said that Tehran would continue to reduce their obligations if the remaining parties uh, to deal do not uh, help alleviate Iran's economic isolation. At the meeting, Iran, Germany, France, Britain, China, uh, Russia and the European Union remained determined to save the deal. Parties to the deal uh, met for emergency uh, talks following an escalation in tensions between Iran and the West, which included confrontations at sea and Tehran's beaches on the Akkad. And that's it then in this newscast. Thanks for watching. Namaskar.